Welcome to today's session. We shall be looking at uh, UNEB 2024 Chemistry Paper 1 and uh, Item 2. So today we are looking at the solutions to Item 2 of this paper which has been done this year, 2024. Now, Item 2 in Section A, as we said, it is a compulsory number and it comes from this element of construct, diversity, and interactions of substances and their importance. Now, the topics which follow, which can be where item number two comes from, these are some of the topics. Number one, the element, elements, compounds, and mixtures from senior one, the periodic table, trends in the periodic table, structure and bonding, formulae, stoichiometry, and more concept using materials. Carbon in life, reactivity cells, polymers, air, and more others. So long as uh, any topic which deals with the diversity and interactions of substances and their importance. So today we want to dive into a uh, unique paper of uh, this year. We see how are we able to attempt uh, each and every task in this item number, uh, number two. I want to remind us of uh, these books. If you have not grabbed for yourself one a copy, please or can order now. Uh, we have the uh, practical book uh, that is for all level. The second edition is already out. You can in the box on those numbers down there, and you'll be able to get a copy. And for your students, if you're a student, you get a copy. A teacher, you can get also for your learners. And they can be also enriched in a different two numbers. And then we have the competence-based curriculum, scenario-based assessment items. They are all here from senior one to senior four with element of construct well summarized here in this book. So you can order and get a copy for yourself. So when we dive into this number, uh, item number two, what we need to do, number one is to identify one category of element, compound, substance, or material with a reason, and we give one a key example. And this should be related to the problem in the scenario. We're going to read the scenario for this unit paper, and we see how best uh, are we able to attempt or answer or categorize any of those which would have been identified there. Then we have number two, we are applying the properties or predictions. Then we give use of element and we state the impact of the element and we give uh, the mitigation. Let's dive into the paper, UNEB chemistry paper one, item two. The scenario goes, an industry wanted to produce lime for treatment of acid soils. The production of lime involves heating limestone strongly, which results into its decomposition according to the equation. We have limestone, which is calcium carbonate, to produce uh, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Industry is also interested to know how much gas is evolved during the process since the gas is useful. Before the production, an experiment was performed where 25 grams of limestone were heated until there was no further change. You have been contacted for help. So that is the scenario. So this scenario in uh, these papers, we need to make sure that with the scenario is very well read and then we picture out, we find out what is it that they want. And then after that, you go to the task. You first read through all the tasks. The first task is saying, as a chemistry learner, explain the categories of the products. It means for you to answer this question, you need to be knowing which products have been released, which means you can need to come back to the equation and find out which product. If you have calcium oxide, 
and then you have carbon dioxide gas. So they're asking category to categorize the products. We shall be able to see that. So I guess the properties of the gaseous product that make it useful in the daily life. So here we give, and as we said from the beginning there, we say that we have to give at least four properties. At least four properties, as we can see in, uh, in this number two. Number one is to categorize. We give reason and we give example. Then after that, we at least four properties. We can see even the question in the neighbor was asking properties. And they are specific on which product of the gaseous product, which means in that case, we are supposed to give at least four properties of carbon dioxide gas. So, um, part C, calculate the volume of gaseous product measured at STP that was formed. How we shall be able to see how to use the more concept knowledge to give uh, this. So this is from more concept properties of carbon dioxide. We can find it in different areas like carbon in uh, environment. We are looking at carbon dioxide gas. So we can find all those from those different um, topics. Then explain the impact of one of the products on the environment. So after reading the scenario and you have gone through all the tasks then we can go into the solution we find out uh, the solution to these uh, items so let's look at the first task so the first task was uh, saying as a, a learner of chemistry part a explain the categories of the product if you recall very well, the products we have, we have the calcium oxide and the carbon dioxide. So we need to categorize these products. They didn't say only product, but products. So we can start with the first one. The first one is calcium oxide. It is very well written here. Here you say is a basic oxide. Now, basic oxide, that is a category. So there you get a mark categorization that's why we see a c1 category uh, one mark because it reacts with water to form an acidic and alkaline solution so this is the reason so there is a mark also for the reason so any student who gives a search will also be given uh, will be given a mark now, another person can look at calcium oxide and then categorize it in another different way. For example, here we have O. Calcium oxide is an ionic compound. Yes, it is an ionic compound. Because it is formed between a metal and a non-metal. So, which means this person also has been able to categorize the calcium oxide as ionic compound and is giving a reason why he is calling it an ionic compound so we are able we are, we are able to we are able to categorize and then we we'll give the reason uh, we we'll give the reason so that is the first product from there we look at the second product now the second product is carbon dioxide gas so we have two learners so the one first one can Categorize carbon dioxide as acidic oxide because it reacts with water to form carbonic acid. So that person gets all the two scores. Or another learner can say it is a covalent compound because it involves sharing electrons between carbon and oxygen. So even that person gets all the two marks. So we have put uh, alternatives so that uh, any learner who has used any of the two can also be given scores. So UNEB is uh, still assessing. But, uh, these are proposed responses. So we don't know which one are they marking, but uh, according to what we have taught and what we know about the categorization of these two products, these are the two ways we can categorize. So. On this, we are giving two scores. 
Now, B was saying suggest the properties of a gaseous product. Now, if you check very well, we had two products. First one is carbon dioxide. Another one is calcium oxide. This one is a solid. This is a solid. And the second is a gas. So when B says suggest properties of a gaseous product, it make it useful, which means now they are talking about carbon dioxide gas. So we give the properties of carbon dioxide gas. So carbon dioxide is colorless and odorless, thus ideal for the use of food and beverages. Number two, it is non-flammable, thus used as a fire extinguisher. Then another one it is soluble in water, that's useful in maintaining pH balance. Then it reacts with bases and metals that are suitable for photosynthesis. So we can give some of the properties of carbon dioxide and part B. Yeah, so when you come to part C, the same calculate the volume of the gaseous product measured at STP that was formed. So when you're looking at uh, calculating the volume of the gaseous product, use the knowledge you know about interpretation of the equation. So we have the equation in our scenario. We have calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. So we can first calculate the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate and uh, we can use the molar masses of uh, calcium, carbon, and oxygen, I might bring by the number of atoms of each of the elements in the compound. So here we have calcium, uh, which is only one, one atom in the compound, times 40, which is its smaller mass. Then we add the carbon, which is one atom of carbon, times 12, which is its smaller mass. Then we add the uh, three atoms of oxygen times 16 which is the molar mass of oxygen and then when we add 40 and 12 plus 48 we get 100 so 100 is the molar mass now we can now interpret this equation in terms of moles and we say one mole we are using uh, uh, we are using interpretation of this equation in terms of mole and you are seeing here it is one mole of calcium carbonate decomposes to produce one mole of carbon dioxide gas now we use what we know from what we know that one mole of calcium carbonate it weighs its smaller mass and its smaller mass is 100 grams so we also know about one mole of any gas at a standard temperature and pressure so one mole of a gas which is now carbon dioxide at standard temperature and pressure it occupies 22.4 decimeter cubed so from there after highlighting this we can go back to our equation here where you say that uh, our statement where you said one mole of calcium carbonate decomposes to produce one mole of carbon dioxide. And we already know what one mole occupies, and we know what one mole of carbon dioxide occupies. So we can now say a hundred grams of calcium carbonate decomposes to produce one mole of a gas, it is 22.4 decimeter cubed of carbon dioxide. Now, if a hundred can produce this, what about one gram? So which means we can divide by hundred both sides, and we say one gram of calcium carbonate decomposes to produce twenty-two point four divided by a hundred divided by a hundred decimeter cubed of carbon dioxide, and there is a mark there. Then we have what about if you call very well in the question? In the question here, they had already told us 
that before the production, an experiment was performed where 25 grams of limestone. So they gave us how much of limestone was heated. So from here, we have already seen that 100 can decompose to produce this. In one gram can decompose to produce uh, this volume. Now what about the 25 of calcium carbonate? It decomposes to produce 22.4 over 100 times 25 decimeter cubed. And our answer is 5.6 decimeter cubed of carbon dioxide gas. So we can finally conclude and say, therefore, the volume of gaseous product measured at STP is 5.6 decimeter cubed. Lastly, we can look at the last part. Explain the impact of one of the products on the environment. So when you're explaining the impact of one of the products, this time around they didn't uh, tell us which product. So we, uh, Lana is free to tell us the impact of carbon dioxide or he can uh, is free to tell us the impact of calcium oxide. So for this case, I talked about carbon dioxide, its impact on the environment. But as you know, any impact we give, we have to make sure we give its mitigation. How can it be mitigated or how can that problem be solved? So we are seeing that carbon dioxide released traps heat in the atmosphere, causing the Earth's temperature to rise, leading to global warming. So there is a mark for the danger. Then this can be mitigated by capturing carbon dioxide released and storing it underground to prevent it from entering the atmosphere. There is a mark on mitigation and you get all your scores. Uh, so for this case, I was able to mark this number out of nine scores out of nine. And uh, you can see that this is a very good number which was coming from uh, the element of construct, from the element of construct uh, number two. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe like and share please uh, click on notification button so that uh, any video that is comes out you'll be able to get it uh, very very fast and you get uh, a lot on your phone or on your laptop otherwise uh, jobless